Hello and welcome back to The Book Rookie. I'm Karen here to talk to you guys about the Classics of Color series, which I'm so excited about. Like, this is going to be so much fun. Okay, so if you guys don't know what the Classics of Color series is, um, I'm basically going to be highlighting books by and about people of color that are un underrepresented. I've come to realize that most classics tend to be by and about white people, and I want to highlight some authors that are just as noteworthy and exemplary as some of the things that we consider classics. So let's get started. So the first book I'm going to talk about is Iola Leroy by Frances E.W. Harper. This is a book about a woman who has been raised as a white woman um, and who lives her life as such until she and her mother are sold into slavery. Iola becomes an outspoken advocate for her people and a critic of race mixing. So as a mixed person myself, um, I am definitely interested to read this book and see what kind of um, points it makes. Um, uh, race mixing has always been a controversial issue in this country um, and it continues today. Um, I personally have a white father and a black mother and that has always um, rubbed people the wrong way so I am definitely interested in reading this book. The next book that I um, am going to be reading is Jonah's Gourd Vine by Zora Neale Hurston. This is the author of Their Eyes Were Watching God. Um, and this story is about a pastor who is in love with three different women. So infidelity. This is going to be my first book that I've read by Zora Neale Hurston. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm also going to be making sure that I tell the stories of the authors that um, I read about. So uh, you guys will be hearing about that very soon. So the next book I'm going to be reading is Brown Girl, Brown Stones by Paula Marshall. So this tells the story of Selena, who is a black Barbadian girl living in Brooklyn, New York. Um, she is obsessed with the idea of living in a brownstone in New York, and it is generally a coming-of-age story, how she um, kind of develops her identity and her sexuality in, <clears throat> in New York in the, uh, in the early 1990s. So the next book that I'm going to be reading is The Autobiography of an Ex-Colored Man, by James Weldon Johnson. So this is actually a fictional story that is heavily based in James Weldon Johnson's own experience um, as a black man who has passed for white. He lived uh, much of his life as a white man. Um, James Weldon Johnson was the first black executive secretary of the NAACP. So this um, from what I understand, is another story of mixed race and passing. So the next book I got is, sorry, there's a glare, um, Octavia E. Butler's Parable of the Sower. This is a sci-fi book about um, environmental and economic crises. It says, when unattended environmental and economic crises lead to social chaos, not even gated communities are safe. In a night of fire and death, Lauren Olamina a minister's young daughter loses her family and home and ventures out into the unprotected American landscape. But what begins as a flight for survival soon leads to something much more, a startling vision of human destiny and the birth of a new faith. So this is going to be probably my new favorite Octavia E. Butler. I've read Dawn. Octavia E. Butler is really great at writing both the quiet and overt violence of humanity and um, what it means to survive. So I am really excited about this one. The next book I picked up is Ralph Ellison's Juneteenth. Um, Ralph Ellison is of the Invisible Man fame. 
Um, and if you guys don't know, Juneteenth is historically the date that slavery was abolished in Texas. It is um, still celebrated today. Actually, here in Atlanta, we have a Juneteenth um, march and parade occurring this year. So for those of you in my city, be looking out for that. The synopsis says, tell me what happened while there's still time, demands the dying Senator Adam Sunraider to the Reverend A.Z. Hickman, the itinerant Negro pre preacher whom he calls Daddy Hickman. As a young man, Sunraider was bliss, an orphan taken in by Hickman and raised to be a preacher like himself. His history encompasses camp meetings where he becomes the risen Lazarus to inspire the faithful. The more ordinary joys of Southern boyhood, bucolic days as a filmmaker, love making with a young woman in a field in the Oklahoma sun. And behind it all lies a mystery. How did this chosen child become the man who would deny everything to achieve his goals? Brilliantly crafted, moving, wise, Juneteenth is an American master's abiding testament to the country he so loved and so and to its many unfinished tasks. So it sounds like it's going to be similar to Zora Neale Hurston's book where it's about um, an American man's fall from grace. So I'm definitely going to be reading this in June um, in honor of Juneteenth. So the next book I've got is Jamaica Kincaid's Lucy. I've never read um, anything by Jamaica Kincaid, so I'm excited to get to this author. So this is another coming-of-age story about a girl from the West Indies who comes to live with a couple in America as an au pair. Um, and it's about both her coming-of-age and her... Uh, growing identity and sexuality, as well as the crumble of this couple's relationship. This should be an interesting one. Um, I think that this is already considered a classic in some circles, so I'm very excited about this one. So the next book is a real treat for me. Um, this is Her Stories, told by Virginia Hamilton, illustrated by Leo and Diane Dillon. Um, this for me is always going to be a classic. I read this book, um, growing up and it really shaped, uh, my imagination and the way that I have grown as a reader and a creative person. Um, it has just lovely illustrations, um, throughout the book. I'm sorry, I just bumped the camera. Um, and it's just, ah, oh, it's such a great read. Um, I actually lost this book, um, you know, as you do, you move around and lose the things from your childhood, and my boyfriend bought this for me, uh, for Christmas this year, so I am very excited to be reading this one again. The next book I'm going to be reading is Proud Shoes. I ordered it in the mail, so it should be coming soon. Um, it was first published in 1956. Um, and it chronicles the lives of Murray's maternal grandparents from the birth of her grandmother, Cornelia Smith, daughter of a slave whose beauty incited the master's sons to near martyr, to the story of her grandfather, Robert Fitzgerald, whose free black father married a white woman in 1840. So I'm especially excited about this one because my local feminist bookstore, Karis Books, is going to be doing a black, um, a black literature book club so that I'm going to be participating in. So I'm going to be going to that at the end of the month. So you guys will be hearing about both the event and the book later this month. That's what I've got for you guys today. I am so excited to start this series. Um, let me know if you guys have read any of these books or any of these authors, what you guys think. If you guys want to read any of these books along with me, let me know. Um, and I will be talking to you guys soon. Bye!